where we've got Firelands Conference hoops between the invading Plymouth Big Red and the home court Crestview Cougars. It's live in Free Boys Hoops, and it's streaming directly to you from your smartphone, TV, tablet, or computer. And it all comes to you next. Here we go now. Here we go now. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa.
Welcome back to the Cougars Den. Storm Bluntley, as always, joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, how good does it feel to be back at the place you graduated from? It's great to be back, Storm, especially at the Cougar Den on a Friday night, ready to see some great Firelands Conference action for a great contest here. Both teams looking, up to, looking to pick up their first Firelands Conference wins of the season. You know, a lot of times, you know, people say Friday night lights are left for the football gridiron, but hey, I'm a basketball guy. I like the basketball. I like the round ball. I like the swishes. I like the dunks. I like the never fake the funk. I, I just love everything about this time of the year. And for Crestview, it is their first time, of course, at home this year in front of this home court at the Cougars Den. Yeah, Storm, they played Temple Christian last week. They manhandled them 65 to 29 and sharing the rock and playing team basketball I believe is going to be key for the Cougars this year. Last year they lost their leading scorer, one of the better players in the finals conference. That was Evan Hamilton. They lost Evan Gibbs, another defensive minded guard too. So the Cougars are looking to rebuild this year, but they got a couple guys that are coming back that might be able to get it done for them. Mason Ringler and Owen Barker I think are going to be the two key X factors for them this year. Down low they're going to have a lot of size and a lot of games. I want to thank everyone for joining us for our Kissel's Lawn Care uh, painting and snow plowing pregame. Took a look at the uh, We took a look at the keys to victory for the Cougars. Now let's take a look at the Plymouth Big Red. Garrett, this is a team, you know, who's had a kind of a bumpy start to their season. Yeah, they just come off a loss to Seneca East in overtime, 57 to 56, a close game. But they later beat earlier in the year Buckeye Central to open the season in the opening tip-off of the year, 51 to 41. Seth Goff is their player to watch. Storm District Six honorable mention a couple years ago. Goff led the team versus Buckeye Central in their win with 19 points. He was the only player in double figures in that contest. As we take a look at a team spotlight here for the Cougars, head coach John Kurtz in his sophomore season, 16 and eight last season. Garrett, he was really able to turn this program around for the better. One of the better years Crestview's had in a very long time ever since I've known of Crestview. That was their best season they've had in a while. 16 and eight overall, eight and five in the Firelands Conference. Won a couple games in the tournament as well. But as I mentioned, they lost obviously the key senior in Evan Hamilton. That was their leading score. I think this year it's gonna be had to be a little bit more well balanced, a little bit more passing than a little bit more iso ball. They're going to be hard to guard in the paint. They got a lot of guys that are very tall. Owen Barker and Mason Ringler got that experience from last year. They're back and ready to go. Yeah, that's one thing I wanted to touch on here, Garrett, in the pregame. I mean, those two tall trees down there in the paint, there is no stopping them. They're just like trees. Once they get rooted down there in the paint, the only thing that's stopping them is the three-second whistle. You're going to have to bring out the repo company as you invented that. As I've been saying, yeah, Garrett. You're going to have to bring out the repo company to move them because they're not going to move easily. You got to get bodies on these guys, crash the paint, and box out. And rebounding, you know, rebound and post play, one of those non glamour things. Not a lot of these, you know, smaller guards want to get down there and get dirty. But these two guys, they don't shy away from the contact. No, they're not afraid of it. And I'm expecting Crestview, if they were to pick up a big win here tonight, they're going to dominate down low and then kick it out to shooters like Heath Cash, who was nothing but splash last year's storm. We nicked in him. Mr. Splashman had two and a half threes of contest last year. Second in the Firelands Conference. So this team, they can stuff the stat sheet. It's going to be an interesting battle against a very tough Plymouth team. As we take a look at our starters for the night, taking a look at Crestview, of course, first. Heath Cash at guard, like we mentioned. Austin Wells, Owen Barker, Jarek Ringler, and Mason Ringler. Now switching gears over to the Plymouth starters. We've got Clayton Miller, Carson Tucker, Trace McVay, Josh Beebe, and Zeth Goth and Garrett. These Plymouth names, they're something I like. Yeah, Strong, they got a little bit unique flair to them, and that's what we like to see here on the OH Report. Make it a little difficult on us to pronounce those names, but be curious to see how Plymouth comes out here. Obviously, a little bit of tired legs going into overtime the other night and second game of the year against Seneca East. It's great to have this atmosphere back here at the Cougars Den Storm. The, the student sections are back, and basketball is back, and we see Crest is going to win the tip and start here on opening possession. See what they can do with it. Wells down the, what a beautiful pass right there. Wells down to Ringler. Beautiful play set up from John Kurtz and his staff. Two nothing here early from the Cougars as Clayton Miller takes it up the floor for the Big Red. Let's see how they can respond here. Loose dribble right there. Heath Cash pressing up in his defender. Plymouth with a beautiful save right there. That was Trace McVeigh. Surprise, no travel call right there. Clayton Miller thinking about popping a three. No, sir. Kicks it out. 
Josh Beebe loses the handle. Incredible defense here from the Cougars. They're stifling him. Loose ball on the floor. Mason Ringler going to come up with it. Jump ball is the call on the floor. And it will stay with the big red. Point guard Clayton Miller is going to take it out of bounds for the Big Reds, see if they can set something up here offensively to get their first bucket of the contest. Miller's won that three, tried to thread the needle, couldn't get it to go. A Little bit of sloppy play here from Big Red as Josh Beebe from Beebe knocks it down for the first two game points of the night for the Big Red. Crush you now on offense, excuse me, Cash has it, kicks it up top to Jarek Ringler, three pointer on the way, that one's not gonna fall, rebound. Tried to get tracked down there by Owen Barker, but won't come up with it, excuse me. And I want to take a quick second to apologize about this game being on what it seems to be like a tape delay. The original plan was to bring this one to you guys live and free. However, there were some hiccups uh, in the setup that we were not able to uh, bring that to you, so I just wanted to apologize real fast. Plymouth now on offense, head full of steam down to the paint, tries to bully Cash down there. That is McVeigh. he kicks it out to Tucker. Tucker on the right wing, Ringler right there. Spin move right into the lane, jab step not gonna go. Once again in the lane, back out to Tucker inside. Tough layup, won't get that to go. And Garrett, that's what we were talking about. So far, Crosu has been stifling this Plymouth defense, making it hard for them to get anything open. It's Cash looking to splash. Not gonna get this one to go, as that's gonna be over the backboard and Plymouth will get the ball back on offense. Take a look at the replay right here. Gets inside and Garrett, just look at the defense. Just, I mean, that is just some tough defense. That's not defense you see very much anymore, that tough inside defense. A lot of guys, they'll get out of the way, but not those two down low. And there's really been no openings for Plymouth here offensively. There's nowhere to go with the basketball. These defenders are glued to their man, and so far, Crestview is winning the battle down low. McVeigh with the kick out to Tucker on the in the right corner now. Almost a steal from Wells. Won't get it. Miller now thought decided tried wanted to, excuse me, try the three-pointer, but it will go over to Tucker and the rebound will fall to Crestview. They want to push the tempo. Jarek Ringler has it. He dribbles inside almost a travel. Now out to, I'm assuming that's his brother, uh, Mason Ringler. Now into the corner. Back inside. Barker's not going to get that one to drop, but it will be an opportunity for two at the free throw line. Grown man move right there from Mr. Barker. The junior was a sophomore last year's storm. Got a lot of experience with that Everton Ham Evan Hamilton lead at squad. Now it's his turn to step up and really be the main focus in this offense. Barker makes his first one. And Garrett, talk to me about the athleticism that Owen Barker has. I mean, the dude was dunking in pregame. He's got a lot of hops uh, in on that. And that really goes a long way when you want to play uh, offense on the uh, interior, but especially when you want to play defense. I believe he attempted a few of those dunk storm against Temple Christian last week. Couldn't get any of the go, but I'm sure he's looking to rock the rim here on a packed Friday night crowd here, the home opener. He's looking to get, you know, a jam session in the night. The one thing I know about Owen Barker is that he'll never fake the funk on a fresh, nasty dunk. I believe that's my signature uh -huh. line right there. Crestby will take it out of bounds now. That is Jarek Ringler has it. Now to Heath Cash trapped in the corner, swinging the ball outside. Look at the ball's movement. Ringler thought he took a little bit of contact. Won't get it saved by Crestview, but it is into the hands of the Big Red. Scoreless yet for the Big Red. Actually, they have two points on the board. It is a one-point game as Miller has it. Garrett, in that number zero position, it is, I believe, in my mind, reserved for the most coveted of players as Miller kicks it out. He's a heck of a shooter, Clayton Miller is. He is knocked down. He's been looking for a shot here tonight, but Addison Raymer has been playing pretty great defense as Crestview's going to force another big red turnover and get the ball back. Garrett, this Crestview defense seems pretty tough. And, you know, I know we've been talking a lot about the interior defense, but, hey, those perimeter guards, those little guards have been pestering on the three-point line. Austin Wells got the play. A couple games last year, Storm, we've seen him, and he was a pest defensively. He was up in the guard, up in their best player, typically the whole entire game, causing some steals and forcing some turnovers. He's doing that tonight as well as Heath Cash. Plymouth looks to be in a 2-3 zone as Barker has it, gets it inside to the big body Ringler. Now out to Jarek Ringler for three, and that one goes. Beautiful ball movement from the Cougars, just swinging it around the horn, and Ringler outside to knock down the tray ball. As Chris Breezy would say, some ball movement as McVeigh tries to get inside a spin move, dribbling his way, and finds BB, and he'll turn it over. Crestview's going to have a chance on the fast break. Jarek Ringler has it. Fake shovel pass and glides through the air to finish at home with a silky smooth layup. 
Just trotting all the way down the floor. Galloped his way into the lane with the fake pass. The fake fillet up for two. Miller has it. That's going to be a reach-in foul on Raymer as we take a look at the Kissel's replay. And I believe I was a little late on that one. <laughs> Garrett, I got a lot on my mind right now. I don't have, you know, the best uh, motor functions, we'll say. But, I, you know, I'll get better at those replays as the season goes along. You know, Storm, for these kids, season just started for us, too. We've got to work out the We've got to shake off yep. the rust, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever excuse I can give myself. <laughs> Miller has it for the Big Red, and this is a big violence conference matchup. Is that look a, a little Luka Doncic s as Plymouth corrals the rebound? But Garrett, how much does it mean to play a conference rival, especially early in the season? Used to seeing Plymouth later in the year, especially in football, but in basketball, they scheduled them a little earlier this year, the third game of the season for the Plymouth Big Red, and the second game of the year for Crestview. So they got to come out with a lot of intensity. By the end of the year, these teams are going to be completely different. So this one, you got to get this one. BB nailed that mid-range jumper, and a lot of people say that the art of the mid-range is dead, but not according to Plymouth, as Raymer has it on offense. And Garrett Raymer, a guy who didn't play last season, now making his uh, varsity debut here for the Cougars. Tremendous start here for Crestview. Going up, thought he was going up for the dunk storm. Caught me off guard right there, but tremendous athletic play from Barker. Thought we were going to see a little bit of jam as well, but... Just a little bit of an easy layup as Miller has it on offense. Takes the screen, gets inside, kicks it out. Another mid-range try on the way. That one's going to be blocked. Great interior defense from the Cougars as Plymouth is still scrambling. They will, however, get bailed out with a foul, and they will take it out of bounds. Heck of a start here for the Cougars defensively. I don't believe this team was the exact way they are right now, Storm, last year. They were a little bit more offensive-minded team, but they are swarming defensively. There's no open guys on the floor for Plymouth. Definitely not, and Garrett, you know, I believe that this might be one of the most cliched uh, kind of sayings in sports is that, you know, offense will win you games, but defense wins you championships. And as a guy who really likes defense, you know, I, I like to say that that's a true statement as Owen Barker puts his body on the line and gets the charge call. Tremendous acting skills right there, Storm. I don't know if that was a charge, but the defender was leaning into Barker, and he sold it pretty perfect. Maybe went to the, you know, the LeBron James school of acting on that one a, li a little bit, but hey, we don't count those. Wells has it now for the Crestview offense. Top of the key gets it over to Raymer. He dribbles to his right. Now looking to get it inside and does Ringler with the big body. Wells swinging the ball around. Good ball movement on this possession from the Cougars. Back inside to Barker, but that one's going to be thrown out of bounds. Just a little bit of a miscue on that pass attempt. It was a tremendous backdoor cut, but didn't realize he already left. Wasn't take, took his eyes off. His teammate right there threw it out of bounds. Turnover for the Cougars. Not many so far here early in the game. Miller once again for the big red offense. Gets it over to Goth. He dribbles to his left. Tries to sneak it inside, and yeah, that one's going to be a foul. Garrett, you want to know why that one's going to be a foul? Heath Cash swiped down at the basketball. Tremendous topic storm pointing that one out. Swipe down. He can never swipe down at the basketball. Ten times out of ten. The stripes are going to call that one a foul. Got to swipe up. Trying to tip the ball out of the defender, but right there. Heath Cash had nothing to do with, you know, Gavin Oakley. Such a bigger body going down to the paint. Heath Cash stands really no chance in that battle. Hey, you know, th that's one thing they say. You, you want to make him earn it at the free throw, and especially the big fella. You know, there's a stigma, I guess, going around for big men that, you know, they can't make their free throws, so if you're a guard, I hear you're taught a lot, you know, swipe at him, make him earn it at the stripe. So far, Oakley knocked down the first one. He might make you eat your words here, Storm. If he can knock down the second one, and that he can, two for two for Gavin Oakley at the stripe. Did not look like me at the free throw line right there as Baith has it for the Cougars offense, trying to push the tempo a little bit. He's at the top of the key, dribbles to his left, spin move, almost a travel. Uh, I believe that one was, but it's not going to be called as Raymer has it, tries to sneak it inside, and that one's going to be almost another turnover in Garrett. And I think this is where things get a little bit scary for Crestview. Not a lot of bench depth this year. Uh, last year, they had a, a ton of guys coming off the bench, fresh bodies, but now a lot of those guys have graduated to the starter position. Yeah, all those guys are now typically starting. Addison Rambo's going to check out for Jarek Ringler. But I think the team 
this year is a little bit different than last year, as I mentioned in the pregame. It's not going to be more iso ball as well as really get it to Evan Hamilton and let him do the work. It's going to be pass it around and get it to the open guys as Cash is going to hit Mason Baith, and he's not going to get it to go. But they do get the offensive rebound. Barker, grown man move. Jarek Ringler for the easy two. Wow, what a pass that was right there behind his defender. An easy deuce for the Cougars. Down by six now is Plymouth. Miller has it right wing. Ringler right there on him. No open spots, gets it inside to Oakley. He goes up in silky smooth move, grabs his own miss, but a block there from Jarek Ringler will end up in the hands of the Plymouth Big Red. Excuse me, the Crestview Cougars. They have it now. Heath Cash going inside. Won't be able to get it. Tries to get his own rebound, but that'll be Ringler. Barker now three-point try on the way. Off the back of the iron out. Rebound corralled by Plymouth, and that will be a foul going against the Cougars. Frustration foul right there, I believe, from Mason Ringler. Getting it the rebound. Got to just get back defensively and reset. Don't want to get the easy foul right there. One minute and 34 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. And the Cougars out to a quick six-point lead. Garrett, it's going to be tough all night for Plymouth to score. What do you think they have to do against this Crestview defense? Well, Crestview in the man-to-man -man defense. Get it down. Gavin Oakley, he had the... Easy trip to the foul line, then he had an easy layup. As right here, Plymouth offensively, nice move right there from Trace McVeigh. Get it down to your big man and see if he can do work on Barker. Heath Cash, deep three-pointer on the way, first of the season at home. That one's not gonna go, and Heath Cash is frustrated with himself. Typically see Cash knocking these threes down, Storm. I believe he's 0 for 2 here early in the first quarter. I'm sure he's gonna get red hot here soon. And Garrett, you know, something you never wanna do as a shooter is stop shooting if you stop shooting that it means you tell yourself you give up on yourself keep shooting you know one of those is eventually going to find the bottom of that and that's you know a lot of the times all you need is to get your confidence back with one shot you make up 100 percent of the shots you don't take storm the late great kobe bryant as a shooter you got to continue shooting regardless if it goes in or not eventually one's going to go in as you mentioned and that's going to really set the fire underneath you faith has it now for the cougars under a minute to play here in the first Baith now to Jarek Ringler. Now out to Barker on the three-point line. Back up to, to Cash. Now inside. Almost a turnover, able to get it back out to Cash. Stewart sets the screen. Jarek Ringler now dribbles to his left. Back out to Baith. Dribbles inside, tries to use a spin move to get into the paint. Barker has it. 30 seconds now to go. Jarek Barker has it. Baith quick. Through the legs move out to Cash. Three-pointer attempt on the way. That one's not going to find the bottom of the bucket either. And Plymouth with a chance to end the quarter with some momentum on their side. Without no hesitation, Heath Cash wanted that one to end the quarter. But Plymouth is going to get the response. Ten seconds and counting. Miller has it. Dribbles all the way inside. Excuse me. That was BB Takes the contact. No call. Crestview with a chance to answer. Get it across the half-court line. Cash from half-court. Not going to go, and that's going to do it here for the first quarter. We're going to be right back. You have been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Instead of paying for some big-name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing. Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Welcome back to the Cougars Den Storm, bluntly joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, we we saw a lot of things in the first quarter. Crestview able to squeak by with a two-point lead, but man, their defense was suffocating. 
Plymouth had a hard time scoring the basketball. Only 10 points to their name, but Crestview didn't capitalize offensively. At the will, I'm sure they wanted to. Jarrett Ringler back in the ball game now to set up the offense for the Cougars. He cashed with a quick crossover, trying to get his way inside. Won't get it, stepped out of bounds. Can't do that, Gary. And a rocky start here at home for Heath Cash. Missed a couple threes. I believe he's 0 for 3. And now with the turnover, stepped out of bounds. So far, not the night, not the home opener Cash wanted. I believe that is Goth on the left wing. Takes the screen from Oakley. Step back, get, uh, try on the way. And that one finds the bottom of the net. Plymouth weathered the storm. Crestview came out red hot and slowed down. And now Plymouth is right back in it. 12-12 uh, ball game. Tie ball game, like you said. Jarrett Ringler has it now over to Heath Cash. In the corner now, Ringler, he dribbles baseline, gets caught by two defenders, back out to Cash. Crestview's gonna reset their offense. Quick cross over to the left, now back up top to Mason Ringler. Back in the corner is Cash. Crestview really moved the ball around, trying to get an open shot as well. Dribbles inside, floater alert. You ain't Tony Parker as BB corrals the defensive rebound. Goth has it now, Wells right there on him. Swings it over to McVeigh. McVeigh with a jab step dribble move, gets the guy in the air, decides not to shoot it, tries to get it into the post. That one's gonna be out of bounds and Garrett McVeigh. What a cool name that is. It is a pretty illustrious name, Storm, to say the least, but he's been hitting his shot so far as well as BB. They've been carrying this Plymouth offense so far here in the first Half 12 12. They weathered that Crestview attack. That they, when Crestview came out firing, got a couple turnovers defensively, but struggled offensively late in that first quarter. Sam Wells will now check in for the Cougars as Miller has it on the three point line. Kicks it off in the corner. I believe that is BB three point attempt on the way. Rebound fell right into the hands of Jarrett Ringler. He's trying to take it the distance of the court. He decides to hand it off to Heath Cash. Fake in the lane. Back outside. Wells for three. That one finds the bottom of the net, and the Crestview offense is back on track. No closeout right there from a Plymouth defender. Easy shot from Austin Wells as he hits nothing but the bottom of the net for three. 15-12 Cougars. Garrett, a celebrity spotting here at Crestview. We got both the uh, 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 Evans down there, Hamilton and Gibbs, of course. We talked a lot about them. They were so good last year. Yeah, they carried this team offensively, and Crestview has struggled here early, but defensively they've been carrying them. They're going to catch up here offensively. Let's see if Plymouth can continue to get on the attack. Plymouth with a couple of quick passes, fake on the three-point line, step back, and that's going to be a miss for Plymouth, but they're able to get the rebound. Excuse me, no they are not. That is going to be a foul, and Garrett, the step-back shot, not something you see a lot in high school ball, but Plymouth, they are not afraid to let it fly. They've hit a few so far here early in the first half, Storm, knocked down a couple, but Coaches never want you to fade away from the basket, always want you on the attack mode. And so far, the Cougars are winning that battle. Austin Wells has the basketball for the Cougars. Hands it off to Jarek Ringler. Now back over to Cash. Looks like that was a little bit of an elevator play to get Cash open. And shooters got to shoot Garrett. Heath Cash finds his spot on the floor for three. Exactly what the Cougars need. Need Cash to heat up from deep and right there. Deep in his back storm like he's looking for the fries at the bottom. Knocks down the tray ball for three. On the other ends, Reynolds not able to get that one to go. Rebound collected by the Big Red. Still a battle for the rebound. Two offensive rebounds now. Miller has it for the Big Red. Swings it over to Reynolds in the corner. Now inside, power dribble goes up, takes the contact, and that one's going to go, and it's going to be a timeout here for the Big Red. Plymouth now down to only four points. Nice timeout call for Plymouth's head coach. Reset. And kind of slow down those shooters that knock down back-to-back -back threes. Austin Wells had one, and then Heath Cash. Got to slow them down, get them out of rhythm, and force them to attack the, uh, get back to attack in the basket. Garrett, do you like live and free high school hoops? Of course I do, Storm. I do as well, and tonight's high school hoops would not be possible if it weren't for a, our generous sponsor. So I want to take a second to thank them. Kissel's Lawn Care Painting and Snow Plowing. Look them up on Facebook to schedule services for your winter snow removal or painting services. Proud sponsor of Cougar Athletics. Sutton Bank, get checking that pays you with Kasasa. And of course, Frito-Lay, good fun. That they will be sponsoring our MVP. Getting back into the action. Crestview on offense. Cash has it, gets it inside a Ringler. Grown man move and a pass to Ringler. Another grown man down there in the paint. Getting it done old school style. 
The two tall trees right there. Barker passing off to Mason Ringler, using his body to his advantage. Just hooks that one off the window for two. Steal right here. Jarrett Ringler clear the path for takeoff. Goes up easy layup in transition for him and Garrett. This is kind of what we saw at the beginning of the first quarter. Crestview jumped out to a big lead. Plymouth was able to corral them. Do you see this kind of going in the same direction? If Crestview can begin to suffocate them defensively and force turnovers, it might go their way, but nice tough take right there from BB to the rack. Gets the foul call ahead of the free throw line for two. Hey, make them earn it at the free throw line. Like I've been saying, who knows? Maybe VB isn't the best free throw shooter. Maybe he'll miss one at the free throw stripe. That's what you got to be thinking when you're a head coach. When you got an easy layup inside, it's better to send someone to the foul line. Just make sure you're giving a hard foul because you don't want an old school three point play. Spore will check in for the Cougars, and Jarek Ringler will take a seat. BB at the line for his second attempt. That one finds the bottom of the net. One for two with the free throw strike. John Kurtz in his sophomore season here as a Cougar head coach. Barking out plays over there on these sidelines as Austin Wells has it. A lot of motion here. Off ball for the Cougars. Ringler now on, or excuse me, Barker now on the three-point line. Spore resetting offense. That's going to be a uh, timeout. John Kurtz wants to talk it over, and Garrett, when they really start to struggle is when they have to sit their starters down, do you think that's just kind of a lack of experience thing? Definitely. I, th I think early in the season, too, a lot of these kids, a lot of the starters for Crestview were the bench guys last year, as you mentioned. It's going to be tough for the younger guys to get acclimated into this offense, but as the year goes on, I'm sure they'll find their rhythm. But right now they got to keep the starters on the floor to keep up with Plymouth. For Plymouth, what do they have to do on offense? It's been a little bit without a bucket. We saw that free throw and one more easy layup, but it's been a while since they've had consistent play at the offensive end here in the second quarter. They got to force some Crestview turnovers and get in transition and get some easy buckets. When they get in the half-court set is when Crestview really can clamp up and clamp down. They force five Plymouth turnovers. They got to limit those, force some Crestview turnovers, and then get some easy wide-open layups in the fast break. Austin Wells collects it in the backcourt, and Miller takes it right back. Cookies. That one's going to be a foul, however. Good foul there in transition to stop the Plymouth fast break. Just as I would mentioned, Storm, they got to force some Crestview turnovers, and Clayton Miller with the steal was looking to get an easy layup, but nice foul from the Cougars to stop that fast break opportunity. A lot of basketball IQ out there for Crestview. They, like, they know how to make the right play at the right time, as Miller has it. Gets caught in the lane, gets it out to BB. BB, the big body on the three-point line, dribbles to his left, gets inside, floats it up top to Oakley, and he makes it look like Charles Oakley back in the paint. What a tremendous pass right there from BB, driving baseline, and then a little dump-off pass down to Oakley, the big man, as he converts for two. I don't believe that there is a shot beyond the half-court line that Heath Cash doesn't like as Ringler goes up strong and gets it to go, Garrett, but I really thought Heath Cash was going to pull the trigger on that three-pointer right across the half-court line. These Cougar big men are threading the needle. Mason Ringler right there getting the ball and kissing it off the window with a beautiful English for two. Tough defense here for the Cougars as Spore is right up in him. And I believe they're going to call that elbow. I think that Goth uh, got someone with his elbow. Can't be swinging those chicken wings out. Got to keep the elbows close into your body. So I'm sitting up here in the, pre in, the, in the commentating booth with you. I feel like I'm sitting at a Coach K, you know, bulletin board meeting about how to play basketball. You're always going to the top tips and the top tricks to be a better defender. Hey, the, the way I like to commentate, Garrett, is I like to think of it as, you know, I'm trying to teach someone the first time to play basketball, you know, make sure they everyone can understand everything that I'm saying, you know, because when I sit up here and say things like chicken wing, you know, I, some people might not understand that basketball lingo. Spore is going to inbound it here for the Cougars. Into the backcourt is Cash. I believe this is a 2-3 zone here for the Big Red as Austin Wells dribbles inside. Gets it to Ringler. Ringler with a double team coming. Now Spore on the back door. Gets inside. Has a man open in the corner. Doesn't see him, and it's going to be a turnover. And McVeigh is going to come up with the steal. And Garrett, just kind of like how we said, Plymouth's offense coming back now. Spore looking to do a little too much right there. Had Heath Cash out there on the wing wide open, but Crestview forces another Plymouth turnover, and this is what is the driving factor of why Crestview's up seven points. 
Keith Cash with a big crossover, tries to get it out to Austin Wells, won't get it, Miller comes up with it. Spore right there behind him. That one's gonna be a foul, count that one. Old fashioned three point play for the Plymouth Big Red. Textbook move right there from Clayton Miller, stopping on a dime, forcing Spore to jump up for the block, getting some contact, getting the end one, head to the free throw line to make this an old fashioned three point play. Miller saw that Spore's mouth was watering. He wanted that chase down block, Garrett isn't going to get it, instead is going to end up with a foul, and Miller is going to end up with, I believe, what the kids nowadays called an and one. Savvy veteran move from Miller, Storm to stop on a dime, force the defender to get up in the air, and then head to the free throw line. But can't convert on that old-fashioned three-point play, just an easy two. Jarek Ringler now looking to slow things down. Excuse me, that is Raymer looking to slow things down for the Cougars. Cash, quick trigger on the three-point line. That one hits the rim and out. The struggles continue for Heath Cash. Miller the other way. Foul off the ball, I believe. That is going to be an offensive foul off the ball, actually. A little bit of confusion down here on the floor. I believe they actually are going to call that one on Crestview. So McVay is going to take it out of bounds with a minute 50 left to go here in the second. Miller dancing with the backcourt violation right there. Almost got one. Crestview picking him up way outside. Three-point step back try. Pump fake. BB has it. Takes the screen. Another step back try on the way. That one almost an air ball, but Heath Cash almost didn't come down with that one. Barker has it now on the fast break, kicks it out, Spore, three-point try from the corner. That one's a warm-up jumper, and Crestview expands their lead. Big Red desperately trying to answer. Miller has it, gets it over to BB. BB picks up his dribble, gets it inside to Tucker, and that one's going to be a foul on the Cougars and Garrett are you okay with that foul that reach and foul as long as you know the Cougars are trying to stay aggressive on defense considering they force seven Plymouth turnovers I think you got to be aggressive and continue to stay aggressive that's a big part of why they're out to this eight point advantage jump those passing lanes see if you get some steals and if it results in some fouls Plymouth always has them to go to knock down their free throws and tonight they're struggling Ringler or excuse me Mason Ringler will be taking a seat for the Cougars as Stewart checks in Tucker for the one-on-one -on -one try for Plymouth. They are in the bonus now. That one goes. He will get a second attempt with a minute 06 left to go in the half. Seven-point lead here for the Cougars at home. Home opener form here at the Cougars' den. Tucker finds the bottom of the net on his second attempt as well. Converts both on the one-on-one. -on -one. Heath Cash, the sniper, bringing the ball up the court. Takes a screen there. Picked up quickly. Don't want him shooting any very many threes as Barker has it. One of the foul. Not going to get it. Spore with the offensive rebound. Gets it out to Miller. One on two. Fast break here for the Big Red. Decides to take it himself. Floats in the air and gets the easy deuce to fall in. Nice defense right there from Plymouth. Forcing the Crestview turnover and then getting in the fast break. They've now forced Crestview. Six Crestview turnovers. They're beginning to play better defense as Owen Barker reaching back like OBJ, grabbing that one out of the sky, putting it back up for two. 20 seconds and counting left to go on the second quarter clock on your Kissel's uh, scoreboard. As BB has it now, 15 seconds left, backdoor cut. Tucker on the inside, blocked by Stewart, excuse me, and Cash is going to slow it down. 10 seconds left to go here for the Cougars. Back out to Stewart, now to Cash. Five seconds left to go. Cash has got to put something up here at the horn in the corner. Mid-range fall away on the way. Takes a high bounce, but won't find the bottom of the bucket. That's going to do it here for half number one at the Cougars. Then we're going to be right back with a halftime report and second half action. But for now, you have been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report.
instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing. Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. the Cougars Den, where the Crestview Cougars are out in front over the Plymouth Beer Greg, 29 to 23. Taking a quick look at the halftime stats, Crestview with seven field goals, four threes, seven rebounds, six fouls, and uh, six turnovers, and shooting one of two from the free throw line for the Plymouth Big Red, nine field goals, zero threes, 10 rebounds, five fouls, eight turnovers, and shooting five of seven from the free throw line. Storm Bluntley, as always, joined by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. And Garrett, we got a wonderful pep band. We got a wonderful environment. Uh, Crestview student section going crazy, and Crestview with a six point lead going in to the third quarter. Tremendous back and forth affair here from both clubs. 29 23 in favor of the Cougars. The biggest discrepancy. Of that halftime staff storm to me as Crestview getting out rebounded, and then of course the Cougars hitting four deep balls from way downtown for the Cougars. Four threes over none from Plymouth. They've been attacking the basket, and the Cougars have been doing it on the outside. Heath Cash has made a three. Austin Wells has as well, and so is I believe Jarek Ringler. So the Cougars are looking to shoot from deep storm. They're going to be a heck of a team if they continue to force a lot of uh, Plymouth turnovers and then get out to the three point line and knock down some crucial three point buckets. And Garrett Crestview comes out so aggressive and so fast in the early goings of the quarters. But you know, at the end, we saw it both at the end of the first quarter and second quarter, they let their foot off the gas. I'm, I might be, uh, you know, being a little bit too personal, but like Mike Zivers offense, it seems like they're playing, you know, not to win, but they're playing to not lose. It seems as if when they when they bring in some of the bench depth, the offense tends to go a little bit down. The defense ramps back up 
once the, once the offensive starters come back in, and so does the offense. But they struggle as soon as that bench depth comes in. They struggle to get points on the board, and then they got to bring in Jared Ringler back in, one of their better scorers. So Crestview, the bench will come along as the season goes along. But tonight they're going to have to rely on their starters to get it done and pick up a big Farlands Conference win. Quick last point here, Garrett. What does Plymouth need to do out of the halftime break to overcome this deficit they've dug themselves into and fought themselves over the Crestview Cougars? Well, they shot themselves in the foot in the first few minutes of the game. They had a bunch of turnovers. Crestview's defense was swarming. But once they, they settled down, they got in the half-court sets, they started to get a little bit better passing the ball, not turning it over as much. They've capitalized on the offensive opportunities they had. They've got a couple fast break opportunities as well. They just gotta continue to do what they're doing and cut down on those turnovers and they should be able to pick up a big win. That's gonna do it here for our halftime break. We'll be right back with second half action right after this quick break. But for now, you've been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. here at the Cougars Den, but only for another 20 seconds. Figured we'd come up. We got uh, some stats here from our wonderful assistant, Peyton Blair. Uh, we got the leading scorer, so Garrett, I'll have you go ahead and take it away with those. Long time friend. Got us some stats from Jerick Ringler, leads the team for the Cougars with 11 points, and then on the other side, Josh Beebe has seven points himself, leading the Big Red. 29-23 ball game here. Gonna be a tight finish. Big time game here. Both clubs are going to want this one at the end of the year. Got to win these ones. Finals Conference. And second half action moments away. Fresh half here. Basically starting off almost like 0 0 six point deficit here for the Plymouth Big Red. They will start with the ball on offense, Garrett, and they got to come out a lot hotter than they did at the beginning of the fir uh, first half if they want to overcome this Crestview uh, lead. Had to slow down the turnovers. They have eight of them in the first half. Want to limit those to at least four, cut those down in half. Don't want to give Crestview easy opportunities to get easy layups. Second half action underway. Storm Blunchley, of course, as always, as per the usual assignment, joined by the one, the only, the illustrious 
Garrett Parlett. And we saw a foul there from Crestview in the early goings, and that's something they struggled with, Garrett. The fouls, the reach-ins, that was something they kind of, were kind of hard to control as Plymouth got into the bonus as Heath Cash goes up with it. Count that one, and a foul. Great stuff in the air from Heath Cash to get himself going once again. Count that baby and a foul, taking the contact, taking the harm, and gets it to roll in the, to the net for two and head of the free throw line to make this a nine-point game. Talk a lot about Barker and Ringler down there, but Heat Cash not afraid to do the dirty work down low and absorb the contact. I believe we call that onions. Speechless storm. Speechless. Converts the three point or the old fashioned three point attempt as Plymouth will have possession of the basketball. See what the big red can do here offensively. Trace McVeigh is going to bring it up the floor for them. McVeigh, such a big impact there in the first uh, in the first quarter as well as VB. He was the leading scorer there for the Plymouth, or the Plymouth Big Red, as you talked about, illustrious Garrett Parlett. And uh, Oakley has it now at the top of the key, swings it over. Right wing now, Plymouth resetting their offense. Miller has it. He had an impact as well on that first half. Three-point on the way, way downtown. And Garrett, that side of the floor, not very friendly to the three-point shooters. Crestview only hit a few of them in the first half, but Plymouth still ice cold. Cash looking to knock down a tray ball. The crowd was going to erupt sore if he did knock that down. I think you might have erupted too. You were in my face. I was about to hit the <laughs> J.R. Smith, wind it up, three-pointer. Unfortunately, Heath Cash not able to make that one. But, man, talk about how exciting that kid is to play. I mean, like I said earlier, he likes any shot beyond the half-court line. As soon as he touches the rock, past half court, he's ready to fire as McVeigh getting to his shot, getting to his fadeaway right there, knocked down. He's been money at that mid-range game. 25 to 32, your score now here in the third quarter as Austin Wells slows things down here for the Crestview Cougars. BB right there on him, swings it over to Heath Cash, now over to Jarrett Ringler, back over to Wells. He dribbles inside, tries to get inside to Barker, double team. Ringler, rare three-pointer. Off the back of the iron, out, out. Wells able to crowd the offensive rebound, fakes the mid-range, kicks it out to Ringler. Deep three-point try on the way again, and that one goes. And once again, out of the break, the Crestview Cougars are on fire. Jarek Ringler, that's a second three-pointer of the night. He's not afraid to step out there and knock it down either from way downtown. Might as well call us the Chris Smoove soundboard with all the things we steal from him. Thank you very much, Chris Breezy. Garrett, somehow this lead was only six and uh, coming into the third quarter, but it has ballooned to 10 points. And Garrett, when it's a two-digit lead, it's a lot harder to overcome. Especially with a team like Crestview defensive, where it's hard to score the basketball. Crestview's offense is beginning to get their feet underneath them. And as soon as they do that, it's going to be a very scary team. Jarrett Glinger has it on the right wing. Now up to Barker. Cash dribbles to his left. Tries to work that one inside. Plymouth double team. It's going to be a turnover. Cash tried to dive for it, but Reynolds is going to come up with it with the steal. McVeigh fakes the three, gets him to turn around. Thought there was a travel there. Not going to get it. Reynolds now has it back out. BB gets the defender off his feet. Plymouth looks like they're scrambling a little bit. Get it inside to Oakley. Cash right there. Going to need to foul him, but Barker comes up with the big block, and Crestview is going to have it in transition. Ringler, another three-point try. Not going to go battle for the rebound. Going to go in possession of the Plymouth Big Red. Would have been a big momentum boost for Jarrett Ringler and company if he had knocked down to that. Trey Ball would have been a 17th point of the night storm, but couldn't capitalize. But Crestview retains their 10-point advantage. Ringler's going to check out. That is Mason Ringler checking out for the Crestview Cougars. Is who else but Miller bringing up the court for Plymouth. Gets it over to McVeigh. Now in the corner is BB. Ringler right there on him. Oh my goodness, goodness gets him to touch the ground, Garrett. That one startled me just a little bit. Ankle breaker right there, made him touch the ground. Tremendous move right there from the big fella too. But we'll get the turnover. Crestview gets the ball offensively. You know what they say, hand down, man down, Garrett. Not even really sure what happened after because I was so focused <laughs> on the ankle breaker. but. Crestview somehow has possession, and Raymer has it. Cash, a three-pointer on the way. Got good spin on it, and it finds the bottom of the net. Heath Cash again for three. Silky smooth shot, Storm. Pretty release, just onions from deep. Kind of stealing my thing, Garrett. Kind of you know, stealing my, steal my <laughs> forte as Plymouth tries to get inside. No foul call. Will get the foul call right there, and Garrett 
Plymouth pretty good from the free throw stripe in the first half. Rock solid from the stripe, went five for seven, headed back to the free throw line. This time gonna be Owen Reynolds. I believe these are his first two attempts. Reynolds with his first attempt at the free throw stripe. Will get it to go and will cut in just ever so slightly into that Crestview lead. Reynolds hits his second one at the free throw arc, cuts the lead to 11. Raymer has it now and gets it in the corner. Barker has it. Raymer listening to his play here from Coach John Kurtz. Uh, we'll get the travel violation, Garrett. They're trying to run something off ball for Heath Cash, and it really seems like this team kind of feeds off his momentum alone. When he starts hitting shots, it seems like the entire Crestview offense really starts to click. It gets to be a lot more fun. The three-point shooting can really ignite a fire underneath the team, and so far the Cougars have been getting it done here from beyond the arc. Six threes in tonight's contest, two from Cash. And you know, the rise in the three-point shot recently in all facets of basketball, Garrett, has been sort of a controversial topic. Some people don't really like it, some people like it a lot, and as Plymouth gets inside and gets an easy layup to go, Garrett, I am of the crowd of shoot it from half court if you got it. That, you know, right next to a dunk, a three-point from half court is probably the most exciting it can get, as John Kurt calls a timeout. But I am, you know, keep the three-point arc going. Add the four-point arc, if you may. I don't know about that one, Storm, but the threes are definitely, they're, they're fun to watch, especially if you get a shooter like Heath Cash that can catch fire so fast. You, you see him one go down, you know, you're already on fire. Heath Cash, he missed a couple in the first quarter, but then he caught fire in the second. Now up to two threes here tonight as he is the leading three-point shooter for this team. So no, that's a no-go from you on the four-point line? No-go from let, the four-point. Let me point. offer you this one, and I did steal this idea from the Harlem Globe Trotters, but let's say... There's a spot on the floor that you can shoot from and it'd be a four point line. A designated circle, probably no bigger than three feet. But if you shoot from within that circle, you get the four points. And like I said, not an original idea. Stole that one from the Harlem Globetrotters. But I mean, come on, at least humor the idea. So, <laughs> it's a, I mean, you gotta give me a little bit of time to think about that one. Let me, let me, let me think about that and I'll, I'll come back into it in the fourth quarter. All right, all right, I'll, I'll give you some time. But I, I'm putting a pin in that conversation. I'm going to remember it as out of the timeout. It will be Crestview basketball. Ringler has it. Swings it over to the savior, Jarek Ringler. Barker has it in the corner. Thought about the three-pointer, decides to dish it off to Raymer. 2-3 zone here for the Plymouth Big Red. Seems to be their defensive choice, as that definitely should have been a, a double dribble by Heath Cash as he gets into the lane. That one's gonna be out of bounds off of Heath Cash and Garrett. I know we talk a lot about Heath Cash, but it seems like he's a guy who plays a lot with his emotions. Yeah, very fiery guy, but off the floor, he's a very quiet kid storm. That's typically how they come on the floor. A lot of competitor, a lot of competitors on the floor is they swarm Barker down low and kick it out to Jarek Ringler. Can't get it to go. Barker able to corral the offensive rebound for the Cougars, gets it inside. Raymer deep three-point try on the way. That one off the rim and in another three-pointer for the Cougars. Used to seeing him catching deep ball storm on the football field, but Raymer can get it done on the basketball court as well with the deep three. Reynolds has it, gets it up top to BB. The Plymouth offense, as per usual in the first halves of these quarters, has gone a little stagnant. Miller now dribbles inside, met by Owen Barker. He tries to leave his feet to make a pass. Heath Cash now on the fast break, slowing things down. A rifle through that one on a frozen rope into Barker. That one's not going to go. Barker wanted the foul, and it's going to be a turnover for the Crestview Cougars. Miller has it on the right wing, hands it off to Reynolds. He gets inside. It's going to be another turnover for Plymouth. A couple of Cougars and a Plymouth Big Red set to check in as Mason Ringler and Spoor will check in for the Cougars, as well as Baith. Three Cougars will take a seat, and Crestview will be on offense. And Garrett, this is where they struggled. This is where they had their woes on offense. What can this bench squad do to maintain this lead? You don't have to expand it. You just got to keep it where it is. This is where Plymouth has come out defensively and got some turnovers, but they got to get it to their, their leading score tonight. Jarek Ringler, he just had the ball in his hands with 14. Got to get it to him and let Crestview, this Crestview bench settle down offensively. 
Big offensive rebound there from Jarek Ringler. Should have been an and one, won't get it, but it will count for two here in the third quarter. Crestview expands their lead. Plymouth the other way, floater alert, high off the glass, won't get to go, struggle for the rebound. That one's gonna be a jump ball and almost looks like Monday Night Raw WWE style right there on that suplex. Your face says it all, Garrett. You really like that one. You know, you used to be a lot into wrestling. I believe you even you know, got a wrestling action figure, if you're not wrong, in, in your 21st birthday cake this year. <laughs> <laughs> Curious. Looks like that one might have bounced off his knee, Storm. So Plymouth will retain possession, but the fans are not liking that one. Their Coach John Kurtz has won a technical call, but... Nothing's going to get called. It's Clayton Miller from way downtown. Can't get it to go. And Mason Ringler will corral it. Jarrett Ringler has it now in the open court. Kicks it out. Barker three-point try on the way. High off the rim and out. That one's going to hit the top of the backboard. And Garrett, they've had a few of those moon balls that didn't go in, but they, man, have they looked close. As soon as Crestview gets the open three, they're taking it. They want to live and die by that three-point shot. And so far tonight, it's working. They got seven triples. Crestview, a team that likes to shoot a lot of three-pointers. John Kurtz, uh, in his second year, as I mentioned prior on the broadcast, really wants to push the tempo and find easy three-point shots, as here's a three-point shot, but it'll be blocked by the Crestview defense, and Plymouth, I believe all of Plymouth wanted a foul on that one. Spore in the corner for the Crestview offense. Tries to get inside, will be a turnover. Miller has it now, gets it down the court to Reynolds. He puts up, huge block by Bates. Clear the lane, clear my schedule. I'm going to be watching that replay for days to come. I don't know. I think they're calling it a foul storm on the shot. Heck of an effort, though. No way. Was that Mason Baith? Chase down block on Hall of Fame, but can't get it to go. Going to be a foul call. And Owen Reynolds will head to the free throw line for his third and fourth free throw of the night. Let's take a look again at the replay. Kissel's lawn care spray painting, or excuse me, painting and snow removal replay. One more time. That looked clean to me. Maybe that was a makeup call there for that three-pointer. They didn't get the foul call on that one. Maybe a little bit of a makeup call right there. Regardless, Reynolds with his second attempt at the free throw line, and that one goes as well. A couple of Plymouth players will check in off the benches. Plymouth now in a little bit of a full court press, kind of feeling that pressure from the Crestview Cougars offense. Time is beginning to be a factor in this game. Closing seconds of the fourth quarter here. They got to mound this, or excuse me, third quarter. They got to mound this comeback here very fast. Three point try on the way. That one's not going to go. Looks like he might get another attempt. Won't. Austin Wells couldn't collect that pass. Bay goes inside. Kicks it off to Ringler. Loses the basketball, and that one's going to be a turnover. And Garrett, Plymouth being the pest they are, will not go away. Crestview has had a couple of opportunities to deliver the dagger. They just have not been able to connect on the three-pointers, but they are letting Plymouth stick around in this one. Not what you want to do. Bench has got to come in here. Starters are back in and put this game away. I believe Plymouth is going to hold this for the last shot, see if they can cut this one to single digits and they can knock down a tray ball. McVay has Cash one-on-one. -on -one. Looks like he might take a screen from Reynolds, decides to wave him off. Cash almost pokes it away. Jarrett Ringler on the fast break. Layup, that one goes. Five seconds still left to play. Plummet has to go to the length of court. They do. BB has it. Three-point try. Not going to fall, and that's going to do it here for the third quarter. Going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action. But for now, you have been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa.
fourth quarter action just moments away here at the Cougars Den. Storm Blunchley joined, of course, as always, by the illustrious Garrett Parlett. Garrett saw an exciting third quarter where Crespi was really able to take control of this game. Started off in the third quarter, swarming defensively, forcing multiple Plymouth turnovers and kicking it out. And the story of the third quarter was that three-point shot. They're trying to get it again. Heath, Cash, can't get it to go, but Barker's there to clean it up for the easy offensive rebound and two. As Crestview getting it done here early. Plymouth looking to fire something of their own. That's going to be off Josh Beavy. Correct call. Headed to the other end. But Crestview's been getting it done defensively. Plymouth going to implement that full court trap, that full court press to see if they can get some easy turnovers. They forced eight Crestview turnovers tonight as Jarek Ringer with a beautiful move, pushing the ball up the floor over to Barker. Barker straight to the cup, can't get it to go. Cleans up his own mess, but gets the block. That was Seth Goff, but they're going to call it on the floor and call a technical on Josh Beebe as Barker's going to head to the free throw line. It seems as if the intensity is ramping up a bit. A little bit of frustration for Plymouth getting the foul call. Thought it was a clean block, but the refs called it a shooting foul as Barker's going to get a couple technical free throws. Looking to make this a 17-point ball game. And that he does, looking to make it 18 on this next free throw. Barker able to get the second one to fall on the technical attempt. And we're going to get some more technical attempts. I believe that was just for the shooting foul right there. So he Cash is going to take the technical free throws. Gets the shooter's touch to go, and that puts the Cougars at 50 points even. And Garrett, it has been, I believe, a while without a Plymouth Big Red bucket. They struggle. You can't give Crestview easy opportunities. Now a 20-point ball game. That's a 4-0 swing in a matter of minutes. Plus, Crestview retains possession. They can make this a 24, or excuse me, a 23-point ball game if they can knock down one of those patent three-point shots. Heath Cash gets it in to Jarek Ringler. Defense right there on him. Looks like Plymouth has decided to opt into the man-to-man -man defense. Barker has it now. Beautiful pass inside. Heath Cash getting it done in the lane. Will get blocked right there. Wanted the foul. Not going to get it. Quick turnover for Crestview. Going the other way. Ringler has it. Heath Cash, three-pointer on the way. Just short, but Ringler able to corral the rebound. Wanted to shoot the three. Gets it over to Austin Wells. He dribbles inside. Another turnover. Plymouth is going to have numbers on the break. Three on one. Fast break. Ringler, the only one back, gets it to Miller. That one not going to go offensive. Put back by Reynolds, and that's going to be a Plymouth score. Nice pass right there from Goth. Couldn't get it to go was Miller, but right there, Plymouth able to pick up the rebound and get it up for two. Stop the bleeding. Heath Cash, Cash has it now. He gets it to Barker inside, and that's going to be a push-off underneath him. Garrett, that's what's frustrating about playing post-defense. You can't put your hands on him. You can't really do anything except for absorb the contact. You can't really push back. It can be frustrating as a defender down there in the low block. It's hard to be a defender in today's age, but he got to adapt to the low post, and Owen Barker is going to try to exploit that every time, use his power to his advantage as he did on that last possession. Raymer has it. Deep inbounds pass to Heath Cash. Back over in the corner is Raymer trying to work it inside. Again is Crestview as they get it out to Jarek Ringler. Plymouth back into the 2-3 zone now. Jarek's got two guys on him. Dangerous pass. That one's going to be corralled by Raymer. Now back over to Jarek Ringler. Inside is Ringler. Short corner. Heath Cash spin move. Puts him in the blender. Not going to get it to go. Rebound for Plymouth. Miller the underway, bounce pass to Tucker, and that one's going to go. Crestview giving up a couple of easy opportunities, and Plymouth taking advantage. Plymouth on a 4-0 run here with easy transition opportunities. Beautiful pass down there from Miller down low to his big fella to make this a 16-point game. Tonight's high school basketball broadcast is brought to you live and free on the OH Report. Thanks, as always, to our very generous sponsors. Of course, Kissel's Lawn Care Painting and Snow Plowing. Look them up on Facebook 
to schedule services for your winter snow removal or painting services. Kissel's Lawn Care, proud sponsor of Crestview Athletics. Sutton Bank, get checking that pays with cha cha And of course, our player of the game will be brought to you by Frito-Lay, as per usual. Out of the timeout, it will be Crestview with the basketball. Heath Cash set to inbound. Heath Cash trying to get it inbounds. Plymouth playing a press defense now, trying to get some easy steals in the backcourt. Cash with a quick through the legs move, tries to get it to Barker. Barker, strong move, won't get it, gets his own rebound, puts it back up, won't put it back in. Still a fight for the rebound, and Ringler goes diving out of bounds, and it will be Plymouth ball. Plymouth got to move quickly here. 5.36 remaining in this game, down 16 points. The shots have got to start falling, and he cannot do that, put it in harm's way, but Plymouth does retain possession. And pinball wizardry here, storing the ball. Doesn't want anybody's hand, but Plymouth gonna knock down a three. That's gonna be Carson Tucker. Now a 13 point game storm. And another big shot from Plymouth. Garrett, this is what happens when you let teams hang around. All they need is for one shot, one layup, one three-pointer to go. And now all of a sudden, it is a completely different ball game than it was just a few short minutes ago. Plymouth doing exactly what they need to do, forcing some Crestview turnovers and then getting some easy opportunities, swinging the ball around as Tucker knocks down the three. Crestview's got to put the dagger in them here in the next, coming, next couple minutes if they want to walk out of here with a win because Plymouth is not going to go away easy. And Garrett, this Plymouth full court trap really giving Crestview some problems. They've created a lot of turnovers. What do you think, John? What do you think is brewing in uh, you know the cauldron that is John Kurt's mind trying to break this press? I'm sure he's drawing up one of the best pre uh, press breaker storm that he can think of because so far they have been giving Crestview fits. Whenever they've implemented it, it's been in short spurts, but now it's do or die time. They got to get some steals, and so far Plymouth trap is working to an advantage. Crestview will set be set to inbound out of the timeout on their own side of the court. Or excuse me, Plymouth is Plymouth's side of the court as Mason Ringler has the ball out of bounds. 51 to 38 in favor of the Cougars on your Kissel's lawn care spray, or excuse me, painting and snow plowing services scoreboard. Crest be able to get across the half court line. Ringler now out to Raymer. He resets thing. Tough defense, and it will be a turnover for Tucker. Two on one, fast break. Tucker gets it to Miller. Miller with a pump fake, puts it up, won't get it to go. Offensive rebound, won't get it to go. Oakley once again, mad dash for the basketball. Bodies all over. That one's going to be a jump ball. And Garrett, if you don't like that, you don't like live and free hoops on the OH report. Look at the intensity swarm. You can tell these two are rivals right there. Clayton Miller missing the bunny. You got to have that one. That would have cut it to an 11 point game, but they will retain possession. He's upset with himself. Got to shake it off though. the next play up. And I don't know, Garrett, if it just, you know, was the COVID season last year, not having a lot of fans as Miller tries to get inside, won't get it to go, offensive rebound. But this feels like a rivalry game, an old fashioned game where there are a lot of, there's a lot of crowd intensity as that's going to be an offensive foul on Ringler, but the fans are getting into it. The players are getting into it. This is exciting basketball. Tremendous right there, selling out. Clayton Miller on the foul right there. Mason Ringler didn't get set. One of the easiest calls for a ref, you got to say set. And Mason Ringler's pleading his case saying a little bit of acting, but got it to work to his advantage. Miller has it now, made a couple of big threes here in this fourth quarter. Wells right there on him, kicks it back out. Tucker, three-point try, that one goes! Wow, the momentum all the way in the Big Reds' favor. Crestview's got to find an answer. Carson Tucker with back-to-back -back triples, and Crestview is struggling to get the ball off the floor. Austin Wells is looking to reset. They get up to Jarrett Ringler at top. Ringler has it, gets it over inside to Barker. Big man move on the way, and one! Wow, grown man play for the end one shot. Exactly what the Cougars needed right there from their leader and Barker. Beautiful spin move, put him in a teacup storm at the carnival, gets it to go, gets the contact, and then one to go. Wow, flex on him, young blood, as Owen Barker doing what he does best, getting inside. Garrett, I was so excited, I forgot to grab the replay, but oh man, that one was just a you had to be there moment. Barker cans that one, pushes the lead even further. If you're Plymouth, you got to get some scoring done, and it's got to be fast. 
Four minutes left and counting. Plymouth on offense outside to Miller. He has it on the right wing. Austin Wells right there guarding him. Takes the screen from BB. Tucker made a big three, last possession, gets inside, too strong in the layup, fight for the offensive grass, bodies once again on the floor, and that one's gonna be a jump ball. Possession arrow points to Crestview and Garrett. It does not get much more intense than how these two teams are playing. Back and forth battle, Plymouth giving it their all, down 13 points, but Crestview doing just enough storm to not lose this game if they continue to keep it up. Plymouth with the press once again. We'll see if Crestview has figured out how to break it or not as they get it inside to Jarek Ringler. He's got Miller in the backcourt pestering him. He gets it across the half court line. Wells now working into who else but Barker. Beautiful pass. Give me that one. Dipsy doodah. That one goes for two. A little bit of hee hee right there from Owen Barker down low to Mason Ringler who kisses it off the window for a 15 point advantage for the Cougars. Plymouth desperate for a score. They have it on the three-point line. They had the momentum maybe just 30 seconds ago. Big three-pointer on the way. Not going to go. Rebound by Barker. Looking to take it himself. Three on three. Fast break. Goes inside. Puts up the layup. Circus shot. Won't go. That's going to be a foul on Crestview and Garrett. The building, the roof would have come off this building if that one went in. Could have been a dagger right there, but here's that pass. Storm Jokic just <laughs> beautiful. Mamma mia. Just check out the court vision. Barker has eyes in the back of his head, knows where all five guys are, where all five of his teammates are on the court. I mean, let's just take a look one more time. Did, did he nutmeg the defender? Oh, I think he did. Wow. You don't, you're not used to that storm as a big man having that kind of passing ability. Sees him out of the corner of his eye, no look pass, and Ringler gets it to go for two is. Heck of a showing here for the Cougars so far if they can hold on. There have been some big plays here in this one, Garrett, and you can feel it here in the Cougars' den as John Kurtz is coaching up his guys to try to break this press once again. Just one more time on that pass and that finish from Ringler. Look at that. That's what we talked about in the pregame, that dynamic, dynamic duo of those two big men down low. They've had a big night here tonight, Owen Barker. That has been... The driving force for this team, getting it down low into Barker and Ringler, and then kicking it out to shooters like Heath Cash and Ringler and Wells on the outside. And Garrett, a lot of a lot of teams, when you look at this team on paper, when you have two guys posted at the low block, you seem you would think you would have a lot of problems spacing the floor, too much cloggage in the lane, but this team, they do it perfectly. They have three guards, really, that can shoot the lights out. And then we've seen Ringler and Barker step out there, storm a knock a, knock, a couple tray balls down. So you gotta stay respectful to them on the outside. BB with a mid-range shot. He's had a quiet second half, but able to come alive there for a quick two-pointer for the Plymouth Big Red. Crestview once again trying to break the press as Garrett Ringler will almost turn over, but what a beautiful pass right there. Gets it to Wells. Won't get anything out of it, but does keep possession of the basketball. Garrett, I don't know if that was luck or skill, <laughs> but hey, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Heath Cash dribbling inside. Pass, little too much mustard on it as Ringler or excuse me, Barker not able to corral it. Will be going Plymouth's way with 2.35, I believe, on the fourth quarter clock. Right play right there from Cash, just a little bit too much on the pass. Barker couldn't corral it as Plymouth forces another Crestview turnover. Almost every possession is a much must score possession here for the Big Red now, Garrett. 10 points, or excuse me, 13 points in two minutes and 30 seconds. Not impossible, but it's gonna be a tough comeback. They got to do it, forcing some steals, and they got to capitalize on almost every offensive opportunity. As you mentioned, Storm, they got to kick it into high gear. Had a uh, fan with some choice words there on the sideline, and he will make his exit. As a uh, hey, Crest 2 JV team will. Uh, Cheer it on, cheer them on. Uh, as we get back into the basketball game, Goth has it out of bounds for the big red. Gets it in to Tucker, who's had a couple of big threes. Mid-range try on the way, not going to go. Rebound, Wells, and a crossover. Oh my goodness! Look at the dribble moves. Turns it over. Miller has it. Three-point shot off target. Barker has it. Double teamed by two Plymouth big red defenders and. Jer 
Jarek Ringler now has it, takes a couple of screens. Heath Cash resets the offense out to Austin Wells. Wells with a quick crossover, almost gets it taken away by Tucker, able to get it in the hands of Ringler. Now back to Wells. Almost a steal there, Heath Cash decides to kick it out. Barker holding onto it, smart play right there. Dribbles inside, Wells in the corner. Crestview really milking a lot of clock on this possession. Up and under move from Austin Wells. Is it gonna go? Gorgeous game management right there as Crestview wasted a lot of the time as Plymouth almost throws it away. Going to be a jump ball and the possession arrow is in favor of the Plymouth Big Red, but Garrett, beautiful game management. A lot of basketball IQ on this Crestview roster as they were able to take a lot of time off the clock here in the fourth quarter. Exactly what you want to do too. Even if you can get an easy look at the rim, hold off, waste some time. The time is in your favor right now, up 13 points. Heck of a couple of smart plays from the Cougars, including Owen Barker. Big red set to inbound. McVeigh is going to have it for Plymouth. Trying to find an open three-point shooter. Getting deep in the five-second violation clock. Andy will get it. That's going to be a turnover. Terrific defense for the Crestview Cougars. Up to now, 18 turnovers for Plymouth. Not a winning, winning formula for the Big Red. they got to cut those down later this season if they want to pick up a big win. But this one not over yet, Storm. Plymouth can catch fire in a hurry. Clayton Miller and Tucker, we've seen, have had some beautiful shots. As Barker Moss is the defender, and they're going to look to hold off here. Cash has it, resets it out to Wells. Plymouth defense has to get aggressive, maybe even foul at this point, have to create a turnover or something. As Ringler has it, gets it out to Austin Wells. Thought about the three-pointer, dribbles it back up, and that's going to be a foul, and I believe the Cougars are going to inbound this one. So Crestview looking to start their season 2-0, correct? Yeah, 2-0. Big statement win here against a Firelands Conference rival here on their home court if they can get it done as Jarek Ringler has it. Austin Wells looks a little antsy there on the inbound play, started running a little too early. They get it in to Ringler and a lot of contact <laughs> on that one there from uh, Ethan, but hey, it's a physical game. Physical game it is, and I'm sure Mason Ringler, he's okay with it, gets ahead of the free throw line to put this game away. See if he can make this a 15 point ball game. Ringler set up at the free throw line. Won't get that one to go on the one and one attempt. Inside now, Barker flying out of nowhere. It's going to be a foul. That will be some easy free throws here for Oakley. Oakley trying to chip into this Crestview lead. That one hurts, doesn't get the first one to go. Won't get that one to go either. Crestview now, all they have to do is dribble this one out. One minute left to play here in this one. And the start the buses chant comes here. As that one was, you know, not an NBA travel, but at the <laughs> high school level, I think you got to call that one. Yeah, Ringler almost had it. Would have been the 20th point of the night. Sure, he wanted that, that 20 piece, but so far since an 18. Plymouth now with the final couple possessions here in the fourth quarter. Miller trying to turn something up and will not get it. And that will be a big red foul. And Crestview will head to the free throw stripe once again. Garrett, wow, what a statement win here for the Cougars. I mean, doing it on your home floor against your probably your biggest rival in the Firelands Conference. Just coming out the second quarter, fresh as can be, almost like it was the start of the game for them, and they got it done. I'm sure both these teams, by the end of the year, won't even look the same. They'll be completely different starting lineups. You can only imagine teams typically change as the year goes on, but 
you got to get these early Fireland's Conference wins out of the way, and that they did here tonight. Crestview will look to go to 2-0 and and 1-0 and in the Fireland's Conference. How incredible that must feel to go one and start off with a big win, 1-0 and in your conference. As Plymouth has it, three-pointer on the way from Miller off the side of the backboard. Cash able to get the rebound, and all Crestview's going to have to do is dribble this one out. 27 seconds, almost a steal. And they do end up, or the ball, excuse me, does end up in possession of the Cougars. 15 seconds and counting. They swing it outside. Wells has it now. 10 seconds and counting. And looks like that's going to do it. Your final here from the Cougars. Then 58 to 43 in favor of the Cougars. We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll have some final stats as well as a play of the game interview. But for now, you have been watching High School Hoops live and free on the OH Report. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa.
Welcome back to our player of the game, powered by Frito-Lay. Of course, who else but Jarek Ringler, 20 points tonight in a big statement win. Fireland's conference rival here, uh, the Plymouth Big Red. Talk to me about how it feels to get it done at home in front of the home fans against a conference rival. Oh, it's just great. First game back since we've had the fans. The student section was just great energy. And it just all helped us out a lot. And it's a great win because we know that they really wanted to get us and we finished the job. Was the game plan to go through you tonight? You had 20 points. You were able to find your shot. Was that the offensive game plan coming in, or did the ball happen to bounce your way? Well, I think our coaches just put us in a good spot to whoever has a hot hand, they go. And my teammates and coaches just put me in a good spot to succeed, and we just fight off the energy. 1-0 now in the Firelands Conference. you got to be thinking the sky's the limit, but what are your goals here for the long term? Rest of the season, playoffs maybe? Just talk to me about that. Well, obviously, we think we're the best team in the conference. We know we can win it, and we just got to put in the work, and we know we can go as far as we want to be. Alrighty, thank you very much, and congratulations once again. Jarek Ringler, you, your Frito-Lay MVP with 20 points. Thank you very much. You're able to hand that off to Garrett Parlett now, and we'll get him back up in here to finish the end of the uh, broadcast. Garrett, now just talk to me a little bit about you know what you saw there as we take a look at the final stats for tonight. Excuse me. Big time win here, Storm, tonight for the Cougars. Dominating performance now, beat them by 15. Did they beat the Plymouth Big Red? Really, in all facets of the game, they dominated forcing a boatload of Plymouth turnovers. They had 22 of them, Crestview with 14, Crestview 13 field goals, seven threes, 23 rebounds, eight fouls, 14 turnovers, and they shot eight of nine from the charity stripe. Crestview played almost a pretty perfect game other than the turnovers, want to cut them down a little bit, but they suffocated Plymouth offensively, Could, didn't let Plymouth, the Big Red, get anything to go, and got it done from the three-point stripe, hitting seven of them. Alrighty, that's gonna do it here at the Cougars Den. I got a lot of thank yous I wanna make. Thank you, of course, Garrett Parlett for locking it down, you know, on the color commentary. Cam, I wanna thank you for running our, our top cam here for uh, our game tonight. I wanna take a, a second to thank our sponsors as always. And of course, I wanna take a second to thank all of you, the fans, as if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to provide all this live and free coverage. That's going to do it here for tonight for our broadcast. This has been live and free basketball hoop, or uh, excuse me, high school hoops from the Cougars Den. And uh, as always, you have been watching live and free.